Good evening and welcome to the League of Women Voters Candidate Forum for the April 1st general election candidates for the positions of Wisconsin Rapids Mayor, Wisconsin Rapids City Council, and Wisconsin Rapids School Board. We're pleased to bring you this forum live on River City's Community Access Television and a simulcast on WFHR. On behalf of the League of Women Voters, thank you to the candidates for their willingness to run for public office and for appearing here tonight. The League of Women Voters is nonpartisan and does not support or propose any candidate or political party. We are going to begin with the candidates competing for Wisconsin Rapids City Council, districts number two and number four. District number two candidates are Todd Ferkey and Laura Hynek. District four candidates are Steve Abrahamson and Tom Riome. Earlier, our candidates drew for order of speaking. Each candidate will have two minutes for opening and closing remarks, and also two minutes for responses to our questions. Our phone-in number for those listening at home on WFHR is 421-8248. Written questions from the studio audience and telephone questions from our community access audience should be directed to the office and not to a particular candidate. Only questions pertaining to issues, not personality, shall be asked, and questions will be screened and sorted for clarity, directness, and to avoid duplication. Uh, we are now ready to start. And earlier, we drew for order of speaking, as I mentioned, and we will start with Tom Riom, candidate for district number four. Thank you. Thanks to the League of Women Voters for hosting this forum. I've been on the council for 18 years and would like to continue representing the fourth district and the city. I'd like to use my time to address issues brought up in a letter to the editor in today's Tribune. Accusations have been made that the city is not receptive to new business. Here we go again. No actual statement as to what the city is doing to not be receptive to new business. What regulations has the city enacted that drives away or keeps a business from locating here? Business and or realtors come to the city about buying property and locating a business. There are zoning requirements of what can locate where. If it makes sense, ways are looked at and considered at times of changing what the zoning is. If a question is asked or someone may be opposed does not mean they are anti-business. Should we have no restrictions of what wants to locate where? I would think that a business that wants to locate in the city probably has some areas in mind where they would want to locate. So I don't feel that a person or business puts up a dartboard of the city and throws darts at it for a place to start a business. The city may suggest alternatives to a potential business, but that doesn't mean there are too many restrictions. Specifically, what actions by our city officials have been taken that shows we are not welcoming to new business? I hope some of these questions will be answered this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Todd Ferkey. Good evening. Uh, and thank you to the League of Women Voters for hosting this event tonight. My name again is Todd Ferkey, and I'm thankful to have this opportunity to speak with you tonight to share some of my ideas and thoughts for the future of Wisconsin Rapids. I'm seeking your approval and your guidance in serving the community and to make Wisconsin Rapids a great place to visit, to work and play, and to raise a family. My utmost priority is to diversify Wisconsin Rapids in manufacturing and in tourism and in commercialism. As a community and together with Buren to our east, Port Edwards and Nakusa to our south, we must quit relying on one type of industry to support our existence and our economies. The paper industry has been a great provider for over a hundred years, but that industry struggles. And when that industry struggles, so do our communities. To ensure that our economies will grow and our cities will grow and become a place that other businesses will want to come to, we must diversify. We must be open to change. We must not be afraid of change and we must embrace it. We do not change our thinking, we will continue to struggle, and other cities and communities will accept the businesses that we didn't want. 
I will use my experience as a small business owner to communicate with others and to make smart decisions while being a good steward of your tax dollars. I will be honest, open, and serve the community with integrity and the citizens of Wisconsin Rapids. Thank you. Thank you. Laura Hynek. I would like to thank the League of Women's Voters for hosting this forum. It's uh, quite a privilege to be able to speak to the people in this community. I've been a lifelong resident of Wisconsin Rapids. I, served, I lived on the west side almost all of it, uh, both as a renter and a homeowner. So I understand how both sides of that fence feel. I uh, raised two children. My oldest son is a judge in Michigan, and my younger son goes to UW Stevens Point. Because he's my oldest son is a judge, that means that I expect something from people that are with me and around me. I demand a lot, and I get good results from it. Uh, I went to Lincoln High School. I got a college degree at Lakeland in computer science, and I have a master's degree in business administration. I work full-time at New Page, and I've been there for 34 years. I work at, re at the Research Center, and there's a lot of complicated things that go on. There are a lot of proprietal things that go on, and we aren't allowed to speak, which teaches you very quickly to listen carefully to what people are asking of you and to give only the things that they need to know back to them, but you have to respect everyone's wishes. I also volunteer as an area captain. I have seven counties underneath me. It's, it's a TOPS organization, and that's a nonprofit organization. There are 27 chapters that I'm responsible for. I have to make sure that they are following all the 4013C requirements for financial things, and I also have to schedule their meetings and uh, make sure everyone's under the proper procedures that they have to follow. As far as the city goes, uh, the unemployment rate actually in Wisconsin Rapids is 6.4 percent. That's not so awful when you think that the state or the national average is 8.6 percent. So we actually have a better uh, ratio of employed pe employed people in our community. Uh, our population is slightly decreasing, and uh, we need to make better use of what we have to make sure we can keep our people here. Thank you, Steve Abrahamson. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and viewers at home. I would like to thank the League of Women Voters for holding this forum. It is a marvelous thing. It's uh, meant to keep you guys informed. Uh, there's nothing better than being informed when you go to the poll box because the choices you make in that box are the ones that affect you directly, especially on a local level. Uh, I've been called several different choice names as of recently, and I actually take pride in it. I'm watching out for what's best for the citizens. I try to bring things to the light so that people can make informed decisions and we can hopefully change things. We need to change the environment around our, our city so that we can bring in better businesses so that everybody can have a job and be self-sufficient. So please, make sure you uh, pay attention to what all four of us have to say tonight. Make a choice. And please, get out and vote April 1st. Thank you. Our first question, we'll start, we will start with district number two, candidate Todd Ferkey. What is your vision for Wisconsin Rapids for the next five years? My vision for Wisconsin Rapids for the next five years and beyond is, again, to get new industry into this city, whether that industry is uh, manufacturing, whether it is tourism, a combination of both, but we need to expand our horizons here. Uh, we have been in such a rut for such a long time. It's not by chance that um, Aspirus Clinic and the Marshfield Clinic has moved to Wisconsin Rapids. They didn't move here for their health, they moved here for our health. And our community is an aging community. You look at um, cities, sister cities, Marshfield and Stevens Point, yes, they have advantages, but we have to take the situation that we're in with our uh, paper industry and uh, expand from there. 
we need to look at filling up our industrial park and our business park. Uh, Renaissance Learning, uh, the cranberry industry, both are great providers of income and uh, jobs for our community. But we need to do more. We need to look for uh, other types of manufacturing, other types of tourism to be brought to the city of Wisconsin Rapids and to the surrounding communities like Port Edwards, like Beeren, like Nakusa. These communities, their economies, they're all interrelated. You can see that uh, by the closing of the Port Edwards Mill. To think that that did not affect Wisconsin Rapids is silly. We have a lot of our residents that did work at that mill and a lot of uh, residents in Wisconsin Rapids that work at the Nakusa Mill or Beeren Mill. They're all intertwined and we need to diversify. Thank you. District 2, Laura Heineck. My vision for the next five years for Wisconsin Rapids, I hope that we can provide, continue to provide, the excellent services that we have in our community. We have a wonderful, wonderful utilities. We have uh, road crews that work very hard to get our roads in, in good shape for us to use. We have a uh, sewer, uh, electric, and I think that um, our garbage, all of our services that the city has are very good, and I think people want them. But that comes at a cost, and that's really important. Our tax base is a little bit high, and we need to remember to keep our costs and control our costs as we work to starting to rebuild our community. We have some great core businesses, New Page, Renaissance Learning, Ocean Spray, Mariana, and we have the new dairy farms that are coming in. And we need to keep them integrated in our city, and we need to find ways to keep them and build them more into the city processes. We don't want to have them start thinking about moving somewhere else. And when we have them, we need to go and continue to build facilities around them that can keep supporting them. With the dairy, we maybe can uh, find some more use to help expand some of the local cheese factories or something and start selling their products more aggressively in the city. Uh, maybe use better use of our mall to go and provide small businesses to get start upstarts. And we need to also give our city an identity. Right now we're kind of in between. We have a cranberry festival, we have a 4th of July, and we have a grand affair, but we don't seem to have an identity anymore. So we need to decide who we are, and then we need to build on that. Thank you. Our question is, what is your vision for Wisconsin Rapids for the next five years? Uh, Number four, uh, District Number Four, Steve Abrahamson. The vision I have for Wisconsin Rapids is one of prosperity. Uh, we need to open up our doors and allow small businesses in. We can't be sitting in mid, uh, committees and trying to decide how many businesses we're going to limit coming to the city, what type of business we're going to limit. If there's already codes and ordinances on the books, we need to look at those. If the new business that wants to come in doesn't violate any of those, open the doors. Um, it, it, it's really frustrating watching some of the, the committee meetings on public access and watching the, the people sitting there purposely trying to find reasons to keep businesses out. So. What we need to do is we need to get rid of the good old boys club. We need to get four new faces on city council. That's going to be a lot of change right there that could open this, these doors. Thank you. District 4, Tom Rayom. Thank you. I think you got some of the answers to my opening statement. No answers. I look for the vision for the next five years. It is to attract businesses and that, that business and jobs and that, and that's what's always talked about. And that has to be done. I think it has been tried. We have been successful in some places, some areas, Mariana, Mariana Crabberries and others. Uh, 
the health facilities that were mentioned. This community is growing. A another industrial park that's over out on the east side. Uh, the park on the west side is just about full. I forget how many acres exactly, but a few acres are left in it to, uh, for a business. To work together with other communities, to see what can be done together, but also what has to be done at that time is to talk to the people that are actually doing the work to see how they feel and to have their input into how services would be combined and provided. Not just those sitting here to make the decision, but input from the workers themselves of how they want this to be accomplished. I want to see our infrastructure done or completed more. Uh, the west side was Grand Avenue and out on West Grand. Uh, it's a beautiful way to come into the city. The lighting that was done. Uh, down through West Grand to the river. It's looked at in a couple of years, hopefully, that it comes about to be doing uh, East Grand. There's a couple streets in the area being done uh, in the, this summer, and so it's to continue growing. Thank you. And thank you to our listening uh, audience on WFHR and our viewing audience for the questions. You can phone those in to f at 421-8248. Our next question uh, will go to Laura Hynek first, district number two candidate. And I want to remind our candidates to please remember to turn your microphones on. Okay. Uh, as a city council member, what type of support would you provide to the Tribune building project? The Tribune building project is uh, in flux yet. They don't really have a defined uh, determination of what they're planning on doing with it, but I do know they currently have a committee that is working on that. And I really hope that they bring that into a, a public access type building where people can come and uh, use the facility for uh, meetings and make it make it something that everyone is going to be able to have access to i hope it doesn't end up becoming like a closed situation and 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 not very many people know how to even and use it uh, have access to it i would love to see it filled with beautiful things like a museum like an art type of thing so that it becomes like a cultural center we have one already <clears throat> a cultural center but it would be nice to make it so that it, it really is an attraction and that the public can see it and when people visit our community i would like them to be able to go and use that as here's another touristy thing to go view while you're here so that really is what i hope they do with the building thank you district four steve abrahamson that's a pretty interesting question. Uh, number one, the building is privately owned by Encourage. So I don't really get into the, the private public uh, partnerships a whole lot. Uh, it should be up to Encourage what they want to do with the building. Would I support what they're doing? Sure. Would I be throwing taxpayer money at it? No. Thank you. Uh, District 4 candidate Tom Riom, the question is, what type of support would you provide to the Tribune building project as a city council member? I guess uh, city support in the, in the sense of, uh, I guess, surrounding it, the streets and that, uh, to, to accommodate what uh, uh, they come up with to do with the building. I don't want the city to be put at risk that if something if whatever was planned fell through, that the city wouldn't be left, in my words, holding the bag. So it is a private venture. Uh, that's what it should continue to be, I feel. But where the city can lend support to help uh, attract, uh, if, it, if it is to ha attract some type of businesses in or how, whatever is, uh, decided to do, but uh, Encourage owns the building. They may sell it to somebody else, but I don't think it should be the city getting into doing that. Thank you. 
Thank you. District 2 candidate Todd Ferkey. I would, uh, I would echo what Steve and Tom had said also. Um, the city does not have the tax dollars to be repairing, fixing up, promoting a private owned building. We need to use our tax dollars to pay our employees, to fix our roads, to create opportunities for businesses to come into this area. It would be great if it turns into a museum, um, uh, some type of uh, community center uh, that people can use, use that facility to do their workshops. I know that was throwing out uh, woodworking, all kinds of different stuff, cultural center, whatever. It's a privately owned building. It should stay a privately owned building. The city should have no part in spending tax dollars doing anything to it other than promoting the existence of it in a way that promotes the uh, culture of Wisconsin Rapids or the opportunities of Wisconsin Rapids. But no tax dollars should be spent there at all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, candidates. Our next question will go to Steve Abrahamson, District 4 candidate first. What is your opinion about allowing residents to raise chickens but no roosters in the city? This actually sounds like a Grand Rapids issue. Um, it depends upon what uh, area of the city these people are looking to do this in. Uh, you know, if it's in the, the far outreach residential areas, I really wouldn't have an issue with it. Uh, I'm all about people being self-sufficient. So, you know, they're raising chickens for the eggs and, and for the meat. So I guess I really wouldn't have an issue with it unless it got closer in to the main residential areas. So I guess that's, you know, it's kind of a touchy subject. Um, if you allow chickens, what what's going to be next? The cow? Then you're going to have issues. So I don't know. I guess we'd have to, to see what happens if uh, that, we come to that bridge. Thank you. Tom Brayom. Well, I'll just start with here we go again. Uh, now with this, we'll decide where it can go. But others, it seems that it's open, wide open to where a business can go. A few years back, and I don't remember how many, that actually was an issue. That was a referral to the city council. It went through committee. Uh, I think the council voted that it was uh, turned down, that it got, went that far. Uh, the person who brought this up uh, thought it would be a good thing to do. And it wasn't a residential area. Uh, it got turned down. I, was, I have been told uh, that there are some other cities uh, that do have this. Um, how far do you go? Uh, uh, of what animals uh, can be? Uh, I don't know. But we've had the discussion. That doesn't mean it can't be revisited. Um, the person who brought it forward seemed to know uh, quite a bit about how it was done in other places, uh, but it uh, failed to win uh, win the support of the council at that time. Uh, and part of that issue, I will say, is where it was located and, uh, in one sense, getting rid of being an agricultural community of rezoning uh, places on the fringe layer of the city. Uh, that the, the council didn't feel that this was the, the right way to go. Maybe there has been a change of, of mind or maybe uh, people uh, in the community can't persuade the council to vote differently. Thank you. Thank you. Our question is, what is your opinion about allowing residents to raise chickens but not roosters in this city? District 2 candidate, Todd Verkey. I um, attempted to have some of my property 
rezoned agricultural because of some of the uses that I wanted to do with my property. I wanted to plant cherry trees. I planted 80 cherry trees. I don't like the city, the government getting involved with my life and my land. That said, if somebody wants to raise chickens and they keep them in their own property, I don't see a problem with it. If you have a dog and you keep it in your yard, in a kennel, in a dog house, on a leash, I don't see a problem with it. It's your land. And if it's not causing a, a hindrance or uh, a problem for a neighbor, you know, you don't put chickens on a leash. I understand that. But uh, uh, as long as they're contained, I don't see a problem with it at all. Thank you. Laura Hynek, District 2 candidate. Okay. Should we allow chickens and no rooster? I'm assuming that roosters are more of a nuisance than a chicken. By that question, I don't know if this question is meant to feel out how we think outside of the box. I'm not sure even why this question was directed, but we have something called zoning. And to have chickens and or roosters, I would believe that that should be under an agricultural zoning permit. I don't know exactly what the requirements are for someone to be allowed to have an agricultural area, but I imagine that you would need to have adequate space. I grew up on a farm with chickens and pigs, cows, and lots of crops. And I think that Agricultural zoning is what would be required, and I do not really feel that there's probably an appropriate place in the city for chickens that would not be considered a nuisance by the neighbors in some eventuality. So I don't want to be completely closed-minded because there may be a real purpose for this, but I really don't see what it is. Thank you. Thank you, candidates. Our next question will be posed to Tom Riom first. What can the city do to clean up contaminated lots so that they are conducive for building new businesses? Uh, District 4 candidate, Tom Riom. Well, contaminated lots, I guess, as I take the question, means uh, fuel oil, oil, gasoline, uh, to that. And that, that, that's how I take the question. Obviously, I, 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 through the hopefully through the federal government uh, uh, that we get a brownfield grant or something to help with the cleanup. Uh, uh, you know, the city shouldn't be held liable uh, for, I'm assuming again, that is some business that uh, uh, polluted the ground. Um, but it may be a way to, uh, depending how large the property was, to uh, get it cleaned up with help from the government feds and to try to attract businesses there again it has to be how you know how big the lot is the area uh, of what kind of business you could look at uh, going in I mean if it's four or five blocks uh, there's probably several things you could try to uh, attract in once it's cleaned up and passes the passes the test of uh, of a uh, not just us, uh, I would believe the federal government had, would probably have the last say in what we could get it put in uh, and for sure if we expected uh, help with any of the funding on it. So, uh, you know, there, I guess a lot of ifs and I tried to say of what came to mind of, uh, you know, what, what type of contaminants, uh, how big the property, uh, where at, and uh, to get help and expert advice uh, from the uh, state and federal government, uh, those people, EPA and that, of, uh, of how and what uh, could be done. Thank you. Thank you. Todd Ferkey. I do have some uh, experience with these contaminated properties. My original business location was on West Grand Avenue. 
I had gas stations on three sides of me, or actually former gas stations. Only one uh, currently existed while I opened our doors in 1994. Um, family Natural Foods, uh, the Phillips 66 to our east, across the street there was an Amico station and uh, Rollin Fuels, there was a bulk plant there. The area was somewhat swimming in petroleum. A good thing about the west side of Wisconsin Rapids, at least, we do have bedrock, uh, fairly shallow bedrock. So with gasoline, uh, it, gasoline, when it goes into the soil, it keeps going down until it finds a, um, a water source, and it follows that water source, in this case, to the river. There are, there were giant super funds that were available, PECFA funds, to help with cleanup. And you've seen some of that take place uh, on West Grand Avenue, uh, where um, the BP gas station is located right now on 12th and Grand and other areas. Um, the thing is, when we live in the city, nobody has wells. You know, we don't drink the water out of the ground. We drink the water out of the tap. And the water that comes out of the tap is filtered by our sewer, water and sewer department. And um, it's not really an issue. So uh, the need to have our ground super clean, although it's nice and nostalgic and whatever else, is not that high a priority to spend hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars to clean up. Thank you. Our question is, what can the city do to clean up contaminated lots so they are conducive for building new businesses? District 2 candidate, Laura Hynek. I'm not sure if these contaminated lots are actually city property or not. If they're already owned by the city, the city is responsible to make sure that they are cleaned. Uh, when I took my law school classes, we were told that if you are selling a property that had already had some type of con contamination issue, it was the responsibility of the seller to incur all expenses to make re repairs and make this land good. If the city happens to have something that's already contaminated and they're aware of that, I don't know if there's any repercussions for going backwards and checking to see if there's some way to um, have the government give them uh, some type of grant or funding to help clean up this property because they now own it and they, you know, did not have that buyer be aware, beware kind of thing going on. If it's a personal business or a person themselves that have this difficulty, I think the city should try to help them find ways to clean the, up the problem, but it's not the city's responsibility to clean it for personal property. Um, I think that sometimes these are the types of questions that you need to ask Sue Schill to go and look into, our city attorney, because she probably can get more background and information on what exactly the regulations are in these situations. Thank you. Thank you. Steve Abrahamson, District 4. <clears throat> I feel that it should be the responsibility of the property owner, whether it's the city or privately owned. The city should have resources available to the homeowner or the property owner where they can apply for, like Todd said, the, the PEC, PECFA, PECFA funds. Uh, there's quite a large amount of funds in that that uh, the normal citizen can apply for. And they, you know, a lot of these forms are, are really tricky, so they do need, people need help filling them out. I think the city should help the people fill these forms out, make sure everything is perfect so that the person could apply for these funds, get them, and get the property cleaned. But really, it does come down to personal responsibility. Uh, it should be the person themselves responsible for the cleanup. Thank you, candidates. Our next question will start with Todd Ferkey. 
What is the most important issue, in, most important issue facing the city, and what is your specific plan to address it? What is the second most important issue facing the city? Well, my my whole platform, my whole reason for entering this race is to help the city diversify, to get more businesses into the city. And those businesses could be manufacturing, those businesses could be commercial, those businesses could be tourism. But we need to do more. We're falling further and further and further behind. My idea is to help the city uh, achieve more businesses here and this is probably not going over good with a lot of people but the person that sits in this seat in the mayor's seat that is the face and the voice of Wisconsin Rapids they need to be the point person to attract businesses they need to get out on the road and they need to seek manufacturers they need to go to trade shows they need to go to uh, job fairs manufacturing expos uh, look for manufacturers like Harley Davidson John Deere Oshkosh trucks contact those people with a handshake not with a phone call with a handshake and say we have buildings we have vacant properties in our industrial park we have vacant buildings in our industrial park in our business park we have a blue-collar workforce that's hardworking and want to provide for their families and to help them make money. So those are some of the things that I have uh, in mind for this council and, and our mayor. Thank you. District 2 candidate Laura Hynek. All through this election process, running as an alderman, I have been being asked, how can we make the city grow? How can we bring businesses in? How can we make them want to come here? How can we make this city inviting? I want to remind everyone that the true role of the city council is to work with passing ordinances, and governing the city, it's controlling the city's property and the taxation, the financial areas of it, and it's appropriating the money. That's direct from the city website, defining what the council people do. We're supposed to work with the other entities to make good policies. I would love to say that as council people, we are the ones that are going to be bringing in the businesses, but we're not. We're the ones that are going to make the policies. Um, I think the most important thing we have is our fiscal responsibility to the taxpayers. At the same time, we need to make sure that we are providing the services that the people want. We have to make sure that our roads and our infrastructure are being maintained and built up. We have to make the city look presentable. We have to make sure that the people are getting what they need and we have to answer and respond to the individual people. Those are what council people should be doing, and that should be our priority. Finances, passing the ordinances, making sure that the city is, is adequately uh, uh, employed to give us the services that we need to continue. Thank you. Thank you. Our question is, what is the most important issue facing the city, and what is your specific plan to address it? What is the second most important issue? Uh, District 4, Steve Abrahamson. The most important issue right now is the lack of jobs. And Laura's correct. Government does not create jobs. What we, do, what we can create is an atmosphere favorable to jobs. If I were elected to the city council, my plan is to go through the comprehensive plan, all the ordinances, uh, all the codes, to see what's doubled up or tripled up and being restrictive to creating that atmosphere to invite businesses to our area. The second issue is listening to the citizens. I've heard so many people say that uh, they've come to the city council 
and they're not being heard. One gentleman has a warehouse that uh, for 15 plus years, he had to get a condi conditional use permit. He was begging the city council to just give him a commercial zoning. And they didn't listen to him. They didn't listen to him. So, you know, finally they did give in and gave him his the zoning that he requires. But it shouldn't take more than five years to see what the issues are, change the zoning if, if required, make it more open to the general public. Now, when I get elected, I will be available 24-7. I have said it once before, I've said it twice, I've said it three times now. I will be available 24-7. If you have an issue that you feel is, is worthy, give me a call, 3 o'clock in the morning. I don't care. I'm there. I'm here to work for you. Thank you. District 4, Tom Rayom. You know, there's many, many things, and I guess you could put, put them together. It's uh, how you spend your money, uh, what the citizens want, and, uh, you know, part is uh, list, listening to the citizens, listening to city staff, listen, listening to other, all the persons of uh, what their thoughts and ideas are. None of us, none of us have the magic bullet. takes discussion with all. And one thing that does come to mind is the comprehensive plan, a thing that was worked on for the longest time. It finally was accomplished, it was completed, but through the process it was always said that this is a work in progress, that it could be changed as the need would come along, that maybe something wasn't right. So again, the council is with, willing, has been, to look at things. I don't know of anybody that was refused the opportunity to speak at the council meeting. Infrastructure, that is a huge, huge thing. I bet everybody here is, would be amazed at how old the pipes are, sewer pipes and that are under some of the streets that we have. It's amazing that they still work, 90, 100 plus years old. I hope we get Grand Avenue done. I hope we can renew this. I would like to see this become more uh, more of a tourist uh, destination. Thank you. Thank you. Our final question for this evening before we move to closing statements will go to District 2 candidate Laura Heineck. Is there a current city ordinance that you would work to repeal and why? Is there a current city ordinance that you would work to enact and why? I think that the city ordinances have all been put in place for a true purpose. Each is in for its own distinguished reason and the council has put them and uh, approved them based on things that I don't know the background of. I really cannot address this question in, in a way of a specific ordinance. I do know that there's uh, questions now going on about sidewalk and easement rights and when West Grand uh, was done from the railroad tracks out to Quick Trip, that when the state came in there was a lot of questions about this road easement and the way the sidewalks and the roads were put together uh, 
the snow is supposed to not ever get on the sidewalks. Well, that isn't quite the policy, the way it ended up going. Uh, they made school routes that insisted that there were sidewalks in these areas, and a lot of taxpayers were worried about the expenses of that. And I think sometimes we need to be wary of incurring expenses that people don't really want to put in. And I do know some neighborhoods have been able to get out of having to pay the extra money to have these sidewalks installed. Each is an individual basis thing, and you can't just uh, run over roughshod over the whole city. If an area or a constituent wants something, you have to listen to their request, and you have to bring it to City Hall, and you have to discuss it with all of the council people and determine really what is the best situation. Thank you. Thank you. Steve Abrahamson, District 4. I really can't say one specific one. Uh, there are so many different ones that can be rewritten, revamped, be a little bit more friendly to the citizens. Um, I know, uh, like the, the city parking, you know, odd one day, even the, the other. I think it should be kind of re unrestricted, except during uh, snow emergencies. But uh, I do want to look over all the ordinances. I have actually started that process about a month and a half ago. Not just specific ones, but I'm going through every single one. And none of them really stick out in my mind right now to really complain about. So thank you. Thank you. Our question is, is there a current city ordinance that you would work to repeal, and why? Is there a current city ordinance that you would work is there a city ordinance that you would work to enact, and why? Tom Riel. Uh I guess uh, I would also say, you know, nothing jumps into mind of what to repeal, and nothing jumps into mind of one I would like to create. Some people say we have too many rules and laws already, so... Um, but I think, again, these things are uh, somewhat works of progress, too. Uh, people that, uh, if an ordinance doesn't, uh, that somebody wants to do something or thinks it should be changed for something, can come to the uh, city and uh, try to get uh, the ordinance changed. Uh, an exception in the case of where it would be, maybe because it's on the boundary of a residential area and a commercial area, to see what can be done. So I think, it, again, there are things like this. Uh, they are set in stone. They are rules uh, to live by, and we need that. I think we need rules to live by. But there also are, is the opportunity for the people to come and try to get the council to change what they would like it to be changed to. Sometimes that happens, sometimes it doesn't, sometimes we have split votes, sometimes unanimous on those issues. But uh, again, it takes the discussion to do it, so uh, I just, uh, nothing jumps into mind. Um, we deal with, I think, many, many during the course of a year where somebody comes in uh, uh, of what the setback is to, for a garage to the neighbor's property. Um, there are rules, but sometimes it's changed. If the neighbor next door says, I don't care, or something like that. So things are done and changed. Thank you. Thank you. District 2 candidate Todd Ferkey. I um, would advocate personal responsibility uh, on, on all things having to do with your residence. I know they are, there are ordinances in place for the good of the community. Uh, I would like to think you wouldn't need Big Brother to tell you that you can't have an old wreck sitting behind your garage, you can't have a refrigerator sitting next to the garage. Um, but there are people that will uh, not use common sense, not give a rip 
you know. So there are ordinances in place for a reason. Uh, I had calls today, people uh, complaining that they had to have their motor home moved because it was parked on the grass rather than on their paved driveway. So uh, telling you which ordinances are good, which ones I'd like to see repealed, you know, I'll have to plead an awful lot of ignorance because I don't know that many ordinances that are in the city statutes. Uh, one thing that does uh, affect me and affects an awful lot of the people, especially on the west side, is our train whistle. And uh, if you're in my business or you're sleeping and that train goes by in the middle of the night, um, you're not a happy person. And so um, whether we could enact some uh, no horns at certain hours of the day or night, uh, even in non-gated uh, areas, I think that would be something that the city could look at. And I know that is a, uh, a, a law that has to go uh, above this level because I know there are federal laws with train crossings and whistles. So that would be the one. Thank you. Thank you, candidates. It is now time for closing statements, and we will start with District 2 candidate Todd Ferkey. Thank you again, uh, League of Women Voters, WFHR, and the River Cities Community Access. Thank you to our viewers and those present. Um, thank you for wanting to be involved and informed while you cast your vote. I want to thank Zach Brewink, Mary Jo Carson, um, Jean Young, Bob Nash, and Marion Hocamp for their years of service, serving their city and serving their neighbors. I want to thank you, Laura Heinick, and Tom Rayom, and Steve Abrahamson for sharing your ideas and your visions for progress of this fine city. But I do believe we need to be more streamlined and more accessible in welcoming new potential businesses to Wisconsin Rapids. We have the water and sewer capacities. We have a business park, an industrial park. Um, we have a lot of areas for uh, room for expansion. And uh, we're really falling behind our, our neighbors to the west and our neighbors to the east. But uh, with your ideas and your support and your votes, I will do my best to help lead Wisconsin Rapids to a, a brighter future. So I thank you again for your presence here tonight. and. I apologize for stuttering, <laughs> not used to being behind a microphone. So thank you. Thank you. District 2 candidate, Laura Heinick. I would like to also thank the League of Women's Voters for hosting this forum. I appreciate and enjoyed uh, listening to all the other candidates as they voiced their opinions on various topics that were discussed tonight. Um, Wisconsin Rapids is 18,600 people give or take a couple. Our median home price is $87,000, which is much, much less than the average in the, in the whole country. The average home price in the, in the United States right now, right now is $153,000. I say that's one reason to invite people. Our cost of living in Wisconsin Rapids is 13.6% lower than the average in the United States. 13% is a lot. Unfortunately, our household income average is $39,000 a year, which is about $11,000 less than most of the people in the, in the country. I think that we have a lot of things going for us. We could be bringing more people in when they understand that this is a community that is enjoyable, we have recreation, we have job growth, 
very, very small, but it's been growing at 0.64% last year. I think that we have a, a great city that we live in. We have wonderful services. We have an infrastructure that's needing some work. I believe that I would do my best to make this city a place people would want to be in that would improve job situations and that would in, in, increase our educational levels and our overall happiness quotient. Thank you so much. Thank you. District 4 candidate Stephen Abrahamson. I'd like to thank the League of Women Voters again for holding this forum. It's very important for the citizens to get to know what each candidate stands for, what they want to attempt to do with the city, and how to try to move us forward. I'm hoping that the listeners and the viewers have made their, their minds up as to who they're going to support. And I'm hoping that we have a rather large turnout on April 1st. It's very important that people get out and vote so that uh, we can move the city forward. You know, we have a, a chance to have four new faces on city council. With the four new people, we could bring in new ideas, a fresh perspective, and let's get it done. Let's go forward. Thank you. Thank you. District 4 candidate Tom Riome. Thanks again to the League of Women Voters for giving us this opportunity. I feel that my experience, knowledge of how things work, what can be done, and what can be possibly be changed are strong assets that I bring to the City Council. Since levy limits and Act 10, governing bodies have had to work with less, which has led to a big reduction in our workforce. For those who support these reductions, listen to the people who would like their streets plowed sooner, as there are times our equipment sits idle because we do not have the manpower to operate it. There's so many, so many hours that our crews can go, can work, and then they, it's rest. We've been asked to do more with less. While freezing raises, wages, or not much raises, cutting workers, cutting benefits. This has, uh, like it or not, in many cases, destroyed the morale of our excellent workers and workers in other areas. And with this, I mean both union employees and non-union employees. The morale is going down. We have many things. Uh, talk about the parking on the grass. It's come up off and on and whatever. Those types of things are things that, if people want, can be ad addressed by the council to bring things forward. Um, overnight parking never would have, at, at both sides of the street, it's been tried. It didn't go. Compromise was on off. Thank, uh, I believe there is a clear choice between my opponent and me. And I ask for your support. And remember to vote on Tuesday, April 1st. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you to our four candidates uh, District 2 candidates, Todd Ferkey and Laura Hynek, District 4, District 4 candidates, Stephen Abrahamson and Tom Riom, running uh, for those positions on the April 1st general election ballot. Thank you very much. After a short break, we will return with our two Wisconsin Rapids mayoral candidates. Thank you. Thank you.